Uh, here we are, we're talking with some cast members and the writer from uh, To Save a Life. Hi folks. Hey, hey. hey. Hello, sir. Why don't you introduce yourselves, uh, starting over here, and tell us who you play in the film. Hi, I'm Kim Hidalgo, and I play Andrew Stevens. Hi, I'm Trinity Scott, and I play Kelsey. Randy Wayne, I play Jay Taylor. Uh, Steven Crowder, I play Doug, the jerk Moore. Uh, Robert Bailey Jr., and I play Roger Dawson. Great. I'm Jim Bretz, and I play the writer. You play the writer, great. <laughs> Plays it very well. He's yeah. a very convincing writer. Mm -hmm. yeah. Indeed. So, um, got a quick upfront uh, question for your character. Why does Roger, do you think, fire off a couple of rounds into the ceiling before he shoots himself? I think um, he's more trying to make a statement, you know? Like, his, his whole deal is that no one really notices him, no one really pays attention, so he, he wants to make a statement by killing himself. I don't think he's really trying to hurt anyone, but he wants to make sure everyone's paying attention in that moment when he, when he takes his life. So I think that's the, the main reason for firing off the shots. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um, now, did any of you folks, young actors, know each other before going into this movie? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We all came yeah. together in the cast. Yeah, pretty right. much. I had stalked Randy because I saw <laughs> pictures of him on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> so it's true. Cool. Cool. Well, do you think after the promotional tour you'll keep in touch? Uh, did, was this the kind of movie that brings you together? As yeah, movie? I think we've actually all been keeping in touch. Yeah. We, we shot this about a year and a half ago, so yeah. we've all kept in touch. Mm -hmm. We also all live in a, or a lot of us live yeah. pretty close yeah. together. Yeah, well, I know it's it anymore, but us three yeah, exactly. all live pretty really. close. Well, Randy and I meet pretty regularly, and, and um, you know, we all kind of keep in contact now with new media, with Facebook and yeah, exactly. stuff like that. Pretty easy. So yeah. it's, it's, it's easy. You know, you don't actually have to pick it up. Because I'm not going to pick up the phone and call Robert. Yeah. Mm -hmm. no, no, no. But I'll Facebook him. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. I think easier. any pro that's the joker. Productions do that, though. It creates such a family because you're, it's such a trusting environment because um, you're, you're being creative and you're doing, you know, um, opening up and doing different things that you might not have done. And, and you want that type of environment so that you can try something a little different. I know some of your lines you ad-libbed, and if you have that type of environment, it, it kind of She didn't like that very much. Like, no, stop. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, tell us about the director when you're doing ad-libs. Was he okay? Well, because well, I'm actually, I mean, I'm, I'm a stand-up comic as well, and that's very much, I mean, on set, that's my style. Is You know, it's very rare that I would do the same take the same, and I'd mm -hmm. always switch things up. Um, and, of course, with Jim, it's his baby, so he gave, gave me some free some freedom a little bit. But sometimes he was like, "This is really what I want you to say." Mm -hmm. So, um, so I have to be careful too because that's just my style, and that's that's how I do it. But it is a collaborative effort, and you have to make sure that everything sort of comes together so you're you're synergized. Mm -hmm. I hope I use that word properly. Yeah, it's a big one. Though. It's a great word. Um, okay. Well, Jim, tell us a little bit about your background and how you came to write this story, and what was important about this story for you. Yeah, I've been a youth pastor for the past 10 years, but never really set out to, to be one. I was a film major uh, in college and planned on living in Hollywood. And the summer before my senior year, uh, I got invited to work with teenagers at a church for a summer and, uh, and loved every second of it. And so <clears throat> went back and finished my film major, but realized that I got the wrong major. And, uh, and for seven years, was doing youth ministry and thinking that was stupid to, to study film. And then three years ago, started uh, writing this script and uh, really based off of so many true stories and, and, and characters that we've had in our own youth ministry. And so it's really cool kind of seeing both like the training from school and then real life experiences kind of come together to make this make this happen. Mm -hmm. Well, you mentioned real life experiences. Now, now you young folks have been to high school and you know, you've been to school. How real are some of the situations that are covered in the film? Have you encountered situations? Like oh yeah, I think that the movie's very realistic. Um, I never actually encountered someone cutting themselves at school, but uh, these things do happen. Um, the parties, the drinking, the sexual relations, these things are realistic. When people make movies without them, it's just fairy tale. So. Yeah. And it's starting nowadays at even a younger age. I was working with some 7th and 8th graders, and they I was surprised. Like Some of the stuff that we experienced, they're you know, when we were 17, they're experiencing it 13, 12, 11. And that's kind of why this movie is made, too, because, again, 
Hollywood is such a powerful tool. I mean, when I ask people, I say, if you could have all the power of Washington, D.C. or Hollywood, which would you take? And of course, the answer is inevitably Hollywood. And like she said, like Trinity says, people are doing so many things now at such a younger age, they're so destructive. It's because Hollywood normalizes that. And it says, and they often normalize it by omission. They don't say, hey, you should do this, but it's just assumed that it's normal. Oh, you're 15? You're playing beer pong. It's, it's, that's what kids do. So kids just see that and it registers as normal. And that's why a movie like this, I, I think, is so important. Mm -hmm. Well, it's interesting uh, you mentioned the beer pong because the kids in the film have to make some really tough choices. And, and to me, one of the toughest is between beer pong and soda through a sock. So, <laughs> I mean, I don't know which way I go with that. So uh, that's a tough one. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah. We, we did worth stuff in the youth uh, growing up, too. I think you guys ever do the peanut butter and the jelly under the arms? No, yeah, I don't want to talk. I'll take yeah. beer pong. <laughs> I'd, pro I'd probably look at Roger's <laughs> options if I had to do that. Oh. <laughs> To that point, that was that was peanut butter in the arms. It just sounds so unappealing. Yeah, it really yeah. doesn't sound that great. Cool. It sounds gross, doesn't yeah. it? They don't blend well. Yeah. <laughs> so, what is it about drinking games? I mean, no matter which side of the fence you're on, you got to do these drinking games. It's kind of weird, isn't it? Yeah. I really know. I love them. They're fun. They're fun. Yeah. That's what that's what it is. It's like it makes drinking fun, so it makes the party atmosphere, mm -hmm. and the more it makes you drink more than you normally would, so then people all get out of their minds and they think they're having a good time until the next day, yeah. when they wake up horrible. and feel horrible. Because yeah. yeah. they don't like drink. Most people don't like drink. This is the thing. Kids are like, oh, I love drinking. I love shots. Really? You love shots? Yeah, I can see the look on your face. That's why you shoot it and the table and get it down. It's because yeah, yeah. you want to act grown up and you want to get drunk. People don't really like, at that age, the taste of alcohol. It's just, it's something you do, again, because that's what you do. And why is it what you do? Because that's what society tells you you do. And if you don't, you're a loser. Interesting. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, and so the problem is they're they're so young. Your judgment is is um, is impaired if you if you drink too much. They're already at a young age, so they're not going to be making um, good decisions anyway. You start doing that, and you add it. You know, if they're going to be inebriated, that's going to be even even a, a more horrible situation. So. Well, uh, tell us about the music used in the film. It's a big part of the film, in fact. Um, go ahead, Jim. Yeah, most of them I sang. No, I yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, we, we just had a great connection with uh, a guy named Charlie Peacock, who is, is a big music producer, and he happened to just walk into the set of, uh, of, one, of one of the times we were showing the film and was so connected with it. Mm -hmm. And he really helped us uh, get so much uh, of the music. And so... Uh, it's cool. I think the soundtrack actually comes out today, and, and so many people have really connected with that through it, through the film. Great. Um, have you all seen the film as part of a live audience? Yes. And, yes. and, and what's the reaction been like? Yeah. It's, it's great. Yeah. yeah. I, think yeah it, I think it resonates uh, in a lot of different ways with a lot of different people. You know, people uh, find some parts humorous. Some people relate to people they know or to experiences they've had in the past. A lot of people will come up to me and say. You know, I, I know someone that committed suicide, and, and you know, I, I think uh, I understand more where he was coming from through your character, or, or I, I relate to Andrea, you know, and, and it, it just inspires me to be able to bring people together. Or I feel like I used to be Jake and, and, or, or Doug, you know. It just, or I want to punch you in the face exactly. because Doug is such a jerk. Exactly. That's exactly you know? what I guess. So there's so many different reactions, and I think that's what's great about the film. A lot of people can get a lot of different things from it. But the best part about seeing it with the live audience is that you hear them laugh at the right moments yeah. and you hear them say aww oh, at the right moments exactly. and you, That's they great. actually to make a movie as an actor and to sit in it and uh, hear the audience actually react to these moments that you wanted to bring yeah. is very very cool because yeah. the, the cute moments you hear them giggle and, 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 the, and the sad and the, and the funny it's really powerful and it really does have it has a little bit of everything I mean it's definitely a drama and it deals with serious issues um, that teams face, but you have that beautiful moment with you uh, and Deja in the truck. There's, there's romance, there's there's drama, there's a lot of comedy with Doug the jerk, and you know, there's it not takes as much. Of emotions. In the final cut, Doug was more of a jerk than funny. I noticed. <laughs> <laughs> I came across as much more unlikable than kind of a Weisenheimer. I was like, I I, I want to hit me. Yeah. So yeah, I, I know I did. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Human, I stop. Now we'll stop the tape.
<laughs> so, uh, what's next for you, Jim, as far as screen? Are you going to do another uh, story for the screen? Or? Yeah, I can't say a whole bunch about it, but uh, but we're working on the script, and uh, we're all about empowering teenagers to change the world. And so we're hoping the next one will enable teenagers to take every orphan off the streets in Africa. So that's the one that I can't sleep about right now, and uh, we're pretty excited about. It. Wow. Well, um, I'm sure you all follow films in general, and who's your favorite director, and who are you looking for best picture at the uh, Academy Awards? I can answer. I would say Wes Anderson. <laughs> Wes Anderson, Fantastic Mr. Fox, absolutely best picture of the no, year. I seen Beyond that. all shadow of a doubt for me. Yeah. Anybody? Not the Hurt Locker. Not oh, Avatar. I like the Hurt Locker too. Avatar. Oh my gosh! A bunch of naked blue, blue people running around. I, see, I enjoyed shooting it. Marines. I, like, I enjoyed I the movie. It was, I it was it a was great an experience. For it me. was beautiful. I thought yeah, it was the worst really motion was. picture. I, I walked out. And the Marine was shot through the chest, and the crowd started cheering for the American Marine actually being slaughtered by the Native American, supposed to be insinuated, you know, insinuated to be peaceful. Well, I couldn't I take can, it. Because I, I can sense out. that this is going to a political direction because yeah, there were I a lot of out. political undertones. For that, that reason, film. I'm going for James Cameron, best director. Yeah. Uh, I'm going for uh, <laughs> Peter Jackson, The Lovely Bones. I hear that's awesome. I haven't yeah. seen that yet. It scared me. Peter yeah. Jackson okay. needs to learn how to edit. Get him a copy of that amazing. Final Cut Pro right there. It's, every movie is <laughs> nine hours long. <laughs> Were there other movies made this year? I, I yeah. Sure. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you've got to get out more, Jim. So, yeah. But uh, anyway, uh, crew from To Save a Life, thank you so much for coming in to speak with us, and best of luck on your uh, other visits. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you.